You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters with thanks to Wexford Insurances. Wexford Insurances. More information at wexfordinsurance.com. I'm joined now by a man that is very well known to lots of our listeners, Blaise Brazen. He's trained hundreds of business owners across County Wexford over the past 20 years. Blaise, you're a Kerry man living in Wexford. Tell me a bit about how that came about. An opportunity came up in 1974 for a manager of the Mart in Wexford in order to replace Weibo, and I was appointed at that particular stage. And how did that come about? I was contacted to see if I'd be interested, and there was a bit of a competition for the position, but I was appointed anyway. And tell me about your years in the co-op. How did they go? We came in 74 for an initial period of six months, uh, but I finished up uh, being chief executive there for 21 years. During that time, uh, we developed the business uh, right through from being a mark business into all the other activities over the 21-year period. Very exciting times, uh, some difficult times in the 80s in farming, uh, and we were very closely aligned with the economy, I suppose the farming economy at the time, but we had some very good years as well. Agriculture is seen as, I suppose, the sector with the green shoots out there today. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, like all industries, uh, they go on cycles. Agriculture is going through uh, and the food business is going through a good cycle at the moment. Uh, the balance between deficit and, cre- and uh, surplus uh, in the food industry around Europe is quite an hour swing of uh, 2 or 3% plus or minus. Yeah, we're going through a good swing at the moment and that's great for farming mm. and good for the economy. How long do you think that swing will last for Blaise? Well, if you look historically at these swings, they tend to go around from peak to trough every four or five years, basically. So uh, we are probably nearly two years into a good cycle now. So, um, you know, three or four years down the road, there could be change. Now, with the levees and, uh, and that uh, being changed, you know, some of these artificial interventions might uh, lengthen that cycle out. Uh, hopefully, they will. So your advice to farmers today is to make the most of it for the next three or four years? Well, I think like all business, farming is a business, like all farmers uh, uh, and all business people, you have to exploit the opportunity when it's there. I know you were with the Mart for 21 years as CEO. Why did you leave? I went back about 20 years ago, a little over 20 years ago, to do my uh, uh, master's in management. And during that period, uh, I probably opened up a whole new kind of uh, environment and opportunity for me. So I made up my mind that we would set up our own business. Now, I did stay on for three years after that. uh, But when the opportunity came to develop uh, Management Resource Institute, uh, I took it and uh, we haven't looked back since. I know that you carved out a nice niche with the enterprise boards across the region. How did that come about? Around the same time, well, about two years after we setting up, the enterprise boards were formed. And uh, I was Sean Maiden at the time, who was just appointed chief executive of the enterprise board. He came to me and he said he had a group of 10 or 12 people, uh, business people, and see if I could do something with them. I wasn't too sure what they wanted. They weren't too sure themselves what, we want, what they wanted. But we put a, a program together on the assumption that it would be a once-off. But that management development program is still running uh, 20, about 18 and 19 years afterwards. And about, about 2,000 uh, companies have done the program since. Has the course evolved much over those 20 years? Uh, of course it has, yeah. Every group is different. The environment is different. Over that period, we've seen good times and bad times from a business perspective. So our focus within the program is always to reflect the environment that's out there and uh, the opportunities and the threats that are there. So the name of the program probably stays the same, but the content and the approach keeps changing all the time. I see now you've used that wealth of experience to become an author and you've written two books. The first one, You Are the Limiting Factor. Tell me about that, please. The first book is, I suppose, very much on the management development program because we were often asked by ex-participants for notes and see if we'd put our thoughts down on paper. So I felt that the best way of doing that was to put it into a book form. And uh, about three years ago, we published uh, Your Limiting Factor. It's very much a resource book that goes through all the various aspects of how to manage a small business and uh, very practical examples and that in the in it the most recent book that you wrote Jack who is Jack? Jack could be any of us I suppose there's a bit of Jack in all of us really I was trying to get the message across that uh, we're the product of both the genetic map that we inherit but also the very how we react to the various influences in our lives whether that's teachers or parents or employers or whoever and as we go on through life uh, we'll also become influences on others right and that was my main message I was trying to get across and I just used uh, the kind of life history of Jack to try and get that message across 
as I was writing the book, there was probably about 20 different people in my head at various stages of Jack's life. And how is Jack selling? Jack is selling very well uh, because it's uh, quite different to the first book. Anybody could probably read Jack and gain something from it. There's about just short of 200 kind of nuggets of wisdom in there in it. They won't be all applicable to everybody, but everybody will get something worthwhile out of it. I know prior to the interview this morning, you were telling me that you're looking to develop Jack into the expat market. How are you going to go about that? We believe it would be a very uh, useful book and uh, role model for expats, those that are immigrating at the moment or have immigrated over the last few years because if they follow Jack's life story, you know, he went, he hit some bad times uh, when he immigrated, but he also came back and was very successful afterwards. We're going to do it uh, through, uh, I suppose, the GA and uh, various other kind of uh, Irish agencies and that, uh, both in America and in the UK. From your experience through mentoring through the enterprise boards and also by delivering the management development program, what sectors out there today do you think have the bright lights? I think if you take uh, local retail and say medium sized construction uh, out of the equation, I think a lot of other areas are doing reasonably well. We would have many clients now and they're definitely in a better position than they were this time last year. Part of it is they've come to terms, I suppose, uh, with our business model. They've adjusted their business model to the, the revenue that's there. But any business that has any kind of angle of export at all, uh, I think have a fair chance and I think they will be quite successful. If you were looking at starting a business today, what area would you be looking at? I think anything with kind of an export angle uh, at all, um, th- th- there's a fair chance because if you're depending very much on the local economy, the spending power is not there at the moment. The money is out there, all right, but it's not uh, flowing. And until such time as I suppose everybody kind of uh, understands that we have hit the bottom or near the bottom or whatever and start spending again, the local economy is going to be quite down. The UK, there's one, we're involved in a number of companies ourselves and uh, they're finding uh, that to say the US and the UK markets are quite buoyant and they're doing quite well in them. Uh, but if they were depending on the local economy, they wouldn't be doing very well. Based on your experience from a mentoring perspective, what have been the most exciting assignments that you've worked on over the last number of years? There's a number, of, you know, I could go on all night in relation to the number of uh, very successful businesses that have kind of come through over the, over the period. You see, everyone have a different definition of what success is for them. You know, if somebody wanted to be a one-person operation and they're successful at it, that's success for them. It's not always based on turnover. It's not always based on the number of people that are employed. So what we do, I suppose, is help people to define what success is for themselves and then put an action plan in place to make that happen. Is there any businesses over the years that you may have worked at that you have regrets that you didn't invest in yourself? Well, we have investments in a number of uh, kind of star companies uh, along the way. We also have invested in a few that didn't work out very well. But that's kind of the, the, the look of the draw, I suppose, in one sense. Generally, if I'm looking at a, a business, I'm really looking at the people at the head of the business. Uh, because from my experience over the last 20 years, the success of a business depends very much on the quality and the capacity of the owner-manager. If I thought that they were good, I'd certainly have no problem in supporting them. Just in relation to critical success factors for any business, what do you think the top three are? I would say by far the most important is uh, clarity of purpose. I've never yet met a successful business person that wasn't cl- clear about what he or she wanted. So that would be the first thing. The second thing I would think is the capability of influencing others to support that vision. And the third one is resilience, because in the life cycle of any business, there'll be good days and bad days. There'll be times when the wind will be to your back and sometimes in your face, and you have to walk your way through those difficult periods and exploit and optimize the good opportunities as well. And if I was to give a fourth one, I would say not to be afraid. There's a difference between risk and gambling. I think successful business people take risk. Gambling is fairly crazy stuff. What advice would you give to business owners out there today that are suffering from cash flow issues? Cash flow and working capital is a major issue for business. It's probably, I suppose, the, the recession that manifests itself very much in the, the cash flow problems in, the, in business, right? Obviously, if you're selling on credit, all that money is uh, at risk. 
Uh, so credit control, I think, uh, arises at the point of giving. Banks, obviously, are the, with all of that and everything being slashed, you know, a lot tighter management in relation to stock, in relation to work in progress, in relation to credit, in relation to collection. All of those variables that the manager, the owner manager has to manage, he or she has to be a lot better as of today than they were four or five years ago. From your own experience in dealing with lots of businesses across the county, what experience are they having with the banks out there today? I think the good ones are still being looked after by the banks. A lot of the kind of the public uh, manifestations, uh, negative manifestations uh, about the bank and not supporting by business. Some of those businesses are not viable, to be fair. And, you know, I wouldn't put my money in behind some of them. It's like anything. uh, If you're a good jockey, you'll always get a good horse. If you're a bad jockey, you're generally up in a bad horse. What are your thoughts on non-executive directors? They've become very popular in the years gone by. I think when a business reaches a certain level, I think it's critical that a non-executive director should be appointed to the board, uh, maybe a chairperson of that board, because he or she will bring an external discipline and an external kind of methodology, I think, uh, in relation to managing the business. And we certainly would be recommended to our our better clients, uh, you know, at a particular level. Uh, as being a very useful uh, exercise. What is that level? I think I wouldn't appoint somebody in, say, the first two or three years of the business, but from once the business settles down into some sort of a shape and has ambitions to move on to f- what we call a phase two uh, development, I think at that stage it's very necessary. What tips would you give to business owners in sourcing and seeking out a good NED? I think the same as the word in sourcing a, a, a good manager, basically. Now, obviously, a different set of skills, but I think one should interview at least three before you define somebody, and you, they would need to be able to articulate what they're bringing to the table. It should also kind of cover a skill deficit that's within the management team uh, in relation. It might be strategic orientation, might be lack of discipline, or whatever it is. Whatever the gaps are in the management team, I think it's a useful way of doing that. I often wondered, Blaze, who influences you? I've been influenced by lots of people, I suppose, along the way. There's a nice story in Jack there where Jack was influenced by a guy digging holes with him in London, a guy called Jimmy. Influences, they don't always have to be big names. It could be somebody someday saying something to you and say, you know, if I was you, I'd do that, or if I was you, I wouldn't do that. Obviously, if I was to name somebody, Dennis Brosnan, my name's taking care, you would certainly have been uh, an influence in my life because I think he's a fantastic uh, visionary fantastic business person and a great man to get things done. On the topic of leaders, are leaders born or are they created? I think a bit of both. Uh, I think it can be a learned uh, skill as well. You, you know, if you read Animal Farm, there was leaders and followers there in the animal kingdom. We're part of that kingdom. But, you know, I don't think we can cop out and say, I, I haven't been uh, born a leader, so I can't be. I think it's a learned behavior, yeah. What advice would you give to people out there today that would be considering starting a business in these times? I would say don't be afraid of it. Look for a bit of advice and help from somebody who's capable of giving it to you. Don't listen to pub talk. Don't listen necessarily to all the negativity that's out there. Talk to somebody who has been down the road before you, who has been successful, because they know what they're talking about. A lot of this loose talk that's out there is irrelevant and it's negative. If you had the opportunity to meet with Minister Bruton, Minister for Enterprise, Jobs and Innovation, what would you say to him about helping the country to get back on track? Well, my, my interest obviously is the SME area and uh, I would re-emphasise the importance of that area. There's 900,000 jobs in that area. Uh, you know, it's pretty well uh, uh, self-generated and you know, running a small business is a lonesome game and any help that uh, an owner manager can get either by way of guidance or way of direction or way of uh, support, whatever, I think that it, it, the country will get a fabulous return back on that investment and it always has. So what you're saying is to reinforce the point of the importance of enterprise boards in each county? I would, yeah. Uh, and uh, I think they've done a fabulous job generally around the country as far as I can see. And uh, anything that would neutralise that in any shape or form, I think there'll be a high price to pay for that further down along the road. I know you're also involved in mediation work. Has there been an increase in that over the last number of years, Bez? Uh, there's always disputes, of course. Um, the type of mediation that we get involved in is uh, commercial mediation disputes within companies uh, or between companies. 
And the type of uh, cases we tend to be involved in are uh, disputes, say, between co-directors of a company or, say, one generation versus next generation, uh, that kind of thing. Um, there's heaps of uh, disputes out there. Like, we, we hear of companies going bust, uh, and everybody talks about the economy and all that. I know of three companies in the last two months uh, who have gone into liquidation, not because of the economy, but because the directors of the company have fallen out and pulling in different directions. But Joe Public would think, and the excuse thrown out there in those situations is, actually, the, the business was bad and all of that there. The root cause, nothing to do with the economy. It was with the, the core directors of the company in dispute. Is that down to a lack of a shareholder's agreement being in place in most cases? It would be a shareholder's agreement, a lack of it, certainly. And this is where, uh, say, an external director executive director would be very useful uh, in order to kind of play the ground in between co-directors. And would also be very good at introducing that type of a system under corporate governance. Absolutely, yeah. And to be fair, I suppose a lot of uh, owner managers and that, they're, they're not over kind of uh, focused on corporate governance, uh, even though it's the legal system within which they, they operate. But in reality, is I suppose they're more concerned with the day-to-day kind of balancing the books and that kind of a thing. But as the, their businesses grow into scale, they have to be far more uh, conscious of corporate governance. They have to be far more uh, conscious of um, the relationship between themselves and their core directors and what direction and what personal agendas these people have. What has your biggest achievement been to date? I think uh, very modestly, I would uh, like to think that I have been a positive influencer on a large number of business people in small ways, but very significant ways. What's next for Blaze? Well, I have two. I'm working on the script of two more books. Uh, one hopefully we'll have out next year. I don't have a title for it yet, but again, it will be a management uh, kind of related book. Uh, I'm personally involved uh, on an equity and uh, board level in a number of companies. Um, the, I think two, th- probably three of those uh, will be, very, they are successful and will continue to be very successful. And uh, I'll give them a bit more time as of the next couple of years. Before I leave you go, I'd like to touch on the subject of succession planning. Uh, it's a major issue and I don't think business people in general put enough of resources or time and effort or energy into planning for the future, especially when it's been passed, when the business itself has been passed on to a second or third or fourth generation. I suppose two questions in this for you. Number one, what are your own plans from a succession planning perspective? And secondly, on the broader base of succession planning, what has been your own experience? Yeah, I think it's definitely an issue uh, in relation to ourselves uh, being a service business. Um, I have a plan uh, with two options. Uh, One option was that maybe some of our own lads uh, would uh, come in, uh, but that's been closed off at the moment. Uh, There's another company I'm involved in, uh, uh, and we might back MRI back into that at some stage. That's in relation to ourselves. But in the more general sense, uh, I think succession is a big issue because we find it in the mediation side of the business and the consulting side of the business that the transfer from one generation to another can become a major issue in business. And I know business that are out there that have difficulty because of that. And I tell the story in one of the books there in relation to a company that I know quite well. Very successful in the first generation. Won't be around in five years' time, in my view. And the reason it won't be around is that the original uh, um, owner-manager of the business, fabulous guy, built a very successful business, very strong balance sheet. Um, but the next generation, are, uh, even though they own the shares, uh, they're still running the business as if John, the original owner, was still around, even though he's five years, nearly 10 years dead at this stage. Uh, at board meetings and meetings like that, uh, he's still influencing the decisions. But the decisions were right for 10 years ago, but they're not right for today. And that's a company that has gone through the mechanical transfer of shares, but not the mental transfer of the ownership. And I think that's critical. Um, I've spoken to them. Um, there's kind of disputes going on uh, in relation to the divide of the pot. And, uh, you know, that business, which was a leading light uh, in John's time, is a very mediocre company now, in my view, won't be around in five years' time. Well, Blaze, it's been a fascinating interview, and thank you very much for coming in today. You're listening to Southeast Radio's Business Matters, with thanks to Wexford Insurances. Wexford Insurances, number one for business insurance in County Wexford.